Hello everyone and welcome back to the Perfect French with Dylan. Today we are on lesson 2 of the imperative. I believe we are on lesson 35 of the conjugation course. If you have followed all the lesson or if you just catch up, just want to say I'm really proud of you, you're doing a great job. 35 lesson of conjugation is very impressive. We have around 10 before we are done with it. So you know almost everything about French conjugation. On the book, if you have the book, it's page 195 to 197. I don't know why I did that. Today's lesson is all going to be about imperative that. So we saw yesterday how to conjugate verbs with the imperative. We are not going to come back on this today. Today we are going to talk about imperative. So how to give other advice when we also use object pronoun. So direct object pronoun and direct object pronoun. We are going to review them at the beginning and then we are going to see all about how to build sentences. So for direct object pronoun, we have for the singular me or m apostrophe for me, te or t apostrophe for you, le or l apostrophe for him, it, la or l apostrophe for her, it. Then we have the plural nous for us. Vous for you and les for them. Then we have the indirect object pronoun. We have me or m apostrophe for me, te or t apostrophe for you, lui for him, her or it, nous for us, vous for you, and leur for them. We are not going to come back on the grammar in this lesson, but remember that to get a direct object pronoun, we're going to ask the questions. Qui, quoi, and for indirect, we are going to ask the question a qui, a quoi. And the third type of pronoun that we have is en, which translates to some, and then y, which always refer to a place. We do have a very particular change for me, te. So both are direct object pronoun and indirect object pronoun. They are going to become moi and toi when they are after the verb. And in affirmative sentences, they are going to be after the verb. Affirmative sentences, they are going to become moi, toi. Not in negative sentences, but we're going to see that later. I also have a little tip for you to remember it. I don't know if that's going to work for you, but we'll see that in a minute. Let's jump right into the subject with sentences. What if we say, ask me? With tu, conjugated with tu. We are going to have, demande-moi. Demande moi. Okay? Or if we say look at you, look at you, we have regarde toi, regarde toi. So both of them don't take a S because it's a S, so we only keep the E we saw that yesterday or in the lesson before if you catch up later. But so, like I said, me and te are going to become moi and toi. Why? Well, because if we keep me and te, we are going to have demande me. Demande me and regarde te. But usually we don't pronounce the e in French at the end of a word. So let's just remember this way. Me and te will become demande m, mm, mm, because we don't pronounce the e. Or regarde te. Regarde te. So that doesn't work. So we change them for moi and toi. But it doesn't work for le. So don't keep the rule for le. Only for moi and toi. You see, ask him, her, with, vous, we have, demandez-lui, demandez-lui. So all of them are going to be always after the verb and they are going to be joined to the verb by a hyphen. They're going to be connected to the verb by a hyphen. Always, 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 always. I can't stress that enough. I see a lot of people who forget it. Even French speaker, even French native speaker. So if you forget it, it's not. A very big deal, but let's keep a correct spelling, please. Let's keep a correct grammar and uh, let's keep the hyphen. Let's see a few more. Look at them with vous. Regardez les. Regardez les. Ask us with tu. Demande nous. Demande nous. Let's go. Let's go where? Well, somewhere. So, allons-y. Allons-y. So, e refer to a place. Allons-y. And of course, we have the is. Take some, take some. Prends-en, prends-en. 
Prends-en. So, en is some. Prends-en. But if we see the negation, the negation is really easy. We saw that yesterday. The only point is that the pronoun are gonna go back before the verb. And obviously, moi and toi are going to go back to me and te. So don't move, don't bother. With tu, ne te dérange pas. Ne te dérange pas. I don't say ne toi dérange pas. C'est là. Ne te dérange pas. Then we have don't talk to me. Ne me parle pas. Ne me parle pas. Ok? So it stays the same as in English unless it's a negative sentence than the pronoun is going to go before. Now, when the pronunciation changes the spelling. So I told you that the verb ending in er when conjugated with tu, we are not going to keep the s. We only keep the e. But when we have en or y after, we are going to keep the s in this case and this case only. Let's see. If we say order some, order some, we are going to have commande en if we don't add the s. Commande en. It's not possible. It's not a good pronunciation in French. So we add the s or we keep the s technically to have a good pronunciation, to have a good flow of pronunciation. Commande en. Commande en. Same thing, for example, if we say stay there, stay there. So there is a place, so it's going to be y. And we have reste zi. Reste zi. Zi. Reste zi. Okay? So this is very specific to the pronunciation and the spelling. When you're good, you can do the exercise 9.4. Now, if we have direct and indirect object pronoun in the same sentence, we are going to have a very specific order for them that is going to change if the sentence is positive, so affirmative, or if the sentence is negative. It's all about that with the imperative. It's all about negative and affirmative sentences. So let's see first for affirmative. We are going to have first le or l apostrophe, la l apostrophe, les. Then we're going to have moi or m apostrophe, toi or t apostrophe, nous, vous, lui, leur. And then we are going to have y and en. Of course, the pronoun me becomes moi and te becomes toi because everything is going to be after the verb. So affirmative after the verb, negative before the verb. So let's see the sentence. Give the toy to the dog. Donne le jouet au chien. Donne le jouet au chien. Give it to the dog. Donne le au chien. With an hyphen. Donne le au chien. Give it to him. Donne le lui. All with hyphens. Donne le lui. Okay? In the negation, like I said, the order changes. We are going to have first me or m apostrophe, so they come back as me and te because it's negative, it's before the verb. Me and m apostrophe, te, te apostrophe, nous, vous. There is a se in the book, you can just scratch it, that's totally a mistake, I'm very sorry for that. Then we have le, l apostrophe, la, l apostrophe, and les, lui, leur, and y, en. So if we say don't give it to him, don't give it to him. With tu, we have ne le lui donne pas. Ne le lui donne pas. Don't worry. Ne t'en fais pas. Ne t'en fais pas. So that's with tu as well. Don't meet me there. With vous, ne m'y rejoignez pas. Ne m'y rejoignez pas. Don't call her, don't call him. Ne l'appelle pas. Ne l'appelle pas. I have to say that the order is a little bit complicated. Just don't forget that sometimes it takes time and some of the things that we see today are advanced. So make sure that you take your time. You come back to review it from time to time and it will come. We don't have exercises to finish this lesson, but we are going to have a lot more when we saw imperative and reflexive verbs. So I will see you tomorrow. À demain.